I visited a mosque, but it is no ordinary mosque because this mosque was designed by and for a particular stream of Muslims. I'm LT and this is Backpack Religion. Before I go any further, you may notice that there's a few things that are different here. I have a haircut. <laughs> now, actually the biggest difference obviously is the room. It's different. I moved recently. I'm not sure how long I'll be here, but I'll be here for the time being, so uh, get used to the change for the near future here. <laughs> Alright, that out of the way. I visited Jossa Solana, which hosts tons of Amadis from around the world. And Amadis, for those who may not know, tend to be a very controversial religious group within the realm of Islam. You see, they consider themselves authentic Muslims, although there are a lot of Muslims out there who do not consider them Muslims. For instance, in Pakistan, the government does not recognize Ahmadis as Muslims. So the divisions between Ahmadis and some other Muslim groups can be severe in certain cases. All that being said, I had the chance to speak with Ahmadis and you can check out that video down in the description after this one, of course. But following that video, an Ahmadi actually reached out to me and invited me out to their mosque because I didn't actually visit an Ahmadi mosque, I just visited an event center basically, where Jossa Solana was being hosted. So of course, having the opportunity to visit an Ahmadi mosque, I was super excited and hopped on the opportunity right away. Now you know, if you invite me somewhere, I may just show up. And I should clarify something real quick. Other Muslims and other faith groups can visit this mosque, it's not like it's closed off to them but it is primarily occupied and run by Ahmadis because sometimes they're not well received within other mosques and so they have built mosques across the world as a safe place for them to worship. And since Ahmadis build so many mosques and build them as safe places for Ahmadis to worship, I was really curious, do they look much different from a Sunni mosque for instance, which I have visited in the past? Well, I was about to find out when we pulled in. The first thing I noticed about the location was that it was a pretty big campus, it wasn't just a mosque. There was obviously a mosque on the property, but there was also like a school building, a gymnasium, a bookstore, and even boarding rooms for students that are living on campus, and I'll get to that. It's basically like an Amity ecosystem where they can thrive together, learn more about their faith and tradition, and come together more as a community. And at the heart of this campus, in the heart of this community, was the mosque itself where they worship God. And so, that's where I headed first. Hello everyone, I'm LT and I'm with Farhan. And Farhan, where are we at right now? Hey LT, welcome to Bethel Islam Mosque. This is our Ahmadiyya Mosque in Vaughan, Ontario, Maple, Ontario. Um, it's one of the oldest mosques in the area. It was built in 1992, completed in 1992. And there's a little community that we have over here. Um, and we can go inside and check it out. Let's go. Yeah, all right. The first thing I noticed when walking inside were the decorations in the lobby. Started with the famous slogan, love for all and hatred for none, which is a slogan many Ahmadis around the world try their best to live by. Then following our time in the lobby, we moved into the men's prayer room, or the main prayer room upstairs. Well, that's, this is big and wide open. Yeah. What sort of thought goes into designing a room like this for prayer? Simplicity, no distractions, um, because it's a time to focus, right? Um, mm -hmm. This is where people come in to talk to God, to ask for uh, their needs, to be thankful to Him, you know, to acknowledge everything He's given them. Um, so there's not supposed to be any distractions. It's always a clean, um, especially in our mosque, it's a very clean um, architecture. Um, but also making sure there's enough space for everybody, right? This is where it struck me that this mosque doesn't seem all that different from any other mosque I would have been to. And you can see another mosque tour of mine in some previous videos. Again, I'll link them down below. Of course, after this video, watch them. And when I say they were similar, what I mean by that is there was just a lot of open space to pray. There was chairs for the elderly and there wasn't any flashy decorations or anything crazy going on. It was a simple room designed to focus the person's attention on the prayer, just like many other mosques out there that I have visited before. And since no one was around, we were also able to visit the room where the women normally pray, and it was very similar to the first room. So similar space, right? Same size, except we've added a room for children, right? Because yeah. they can get very loud and rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control them in, during prayer service. So for mothers with small children, they are able to you know, pray in there and let their kids roam free a bit and still pay attention to what's happening. Mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, in terms of the prayer service, it's the same. Unlike the first mosque I ever visited, this one 
actually had its amenities separate from the mosque. They weren't all in the same building, such as the gym and the classrooms. Although I do want to note before we move on to the next building, the outside of the mosque was pretty cool to look at. I really liked the architectural design, specifically the tall spires at the top. For whatever reason, they stood out to me. But moving away from the mosque, we started to take a short walk towards the school I was describing earlier. And as I mentioned earlier, there are students on this campus and they come here to become missionaries. They want to learn more about their faith. They want to learn more about Amadi tradition. And they want to be effective at communicating it so that they can go out and serve their community and preach their message. That is why this campus is so important to them because it is the heart of not only worship and community, but also education. And where does education normally start? It starts with books. So that meant the first place we visited was the library. The library contained a lot of common Islamic literature, as, such as the Quran, Hadiths, biographies about Muhammad, and so forth. There was a section there specifically for Ahmadi literature about their specific tradition and their specific beliefs. But a lot of it was just general Islamic literature. And when leaving the library and walking through the rest of the building, it really brought me back to my school days because that's basically what the building felt like. It felt like one giant school, especially on like the third floor, I believe it was, where the classrooms were. And the first thing I noticed were the projects and displays on the wall. They wrap around the hallway, helping demonstrate or teach about a certain topic. That topic can change, so the presentation will change from time to time. But the goal of the displays and the presentation is to help teach people about a particular topic specific to Islam. But they don't just learn about their Ahmadi tradition or about Islam within these classes. They also learn other topics such as different philosophies, religion, languages, and history, and different things. A lot, of, a lot of humanities. Because as the principal demonstrated there, they want their students to be well educated and well rounded. You have to have a high school diploma with you, right? Okay. Because it's part of the admission requirements. And we want them when they graduate that they should be very articulate. Uh, speaking for myself in English, but they're also taught Arabic, uh, Urdu, Persian. And uh, so you know, we'd like them to have very, feel very comfortable. We want to bring them up to par in all of these languages. Mm -hmm. Because as I keep on telling them, they, they, they will probably spend time interacting with, with, with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? and. Uh, so they have to be able to think on their feet and they have to be articulate. So we do a lot of uh, extemporary speeches, debates, you know, I've got them, I make them do presentations and everything from uh, the existence of God to, uh, to French fries. So this mosque and this community center seemed rather similar to the Sunni mosque and school I would have visited as far as the facilities they provide. But there is one thing that made the Ahmadi community a little bit unique. They had their own like broadcasting channel, basically. It was like an Ahmadi network that people can watch and listen to. We weren't able to go inside, sadly, or, or get a tour, but that was something that stood out to me, that within this building, they had their own sort of like broadcasting network, which makes it very apparent and obvious that the Ahmadi community is a very tight knit community. They study together, they worship together, they watch a lot of the same material, they listen to a lot of the same material. They are a very strongly bonded community. And thankfully, they allowed me to get a peek into that community and invited me for a visit. So for that, I say thank you. And I'm also thankful for you if you watched all the way to the end of this video. It really does help when you watch this video, like it, leave comments, all those things supports the mission here to visit everything religion. So to you, I say thank you. And let me know down below where you would like me to go next or what I should check out. Until then, I had to look for my backpack. Until then, farewell. I don't even know how the camera is right now. All right. <laughs> Hopefully I walked off camera, I have no idea. <laughs> New setup, new setup.